Hey, it's Tim, Pickup Truck Plus SUV Talk, and I just noticed the very scenic scenery behind me in the hotel room I'm at. Uh, I want to alert you guys to something on the homepage blowing up on PickupTruckTalk.com. Uh, it is on fire. You can see there's a main story there in the middle. Consumer Report says don't buy the 2023 Ford F-150. It's one of the only trucks they've done this with that model year for 2023. And it's big news, lots of controversy. People are commenting already. The social media posts are getting some comments. I thought viewers on YouTube, I know you guys got a lot to say. So before you start typing all this stuff up, let me go through the details. So Jill wrote the story up a little bit earlier today. Uh, Jill Smith, managing editor. Consumer Report says don't buy the 2023 Ford F-150. Again, you can find this on pickuptrucktalk.com. Guys, we've been covering reliability stories for a long time. Sorry that sound is echoing in the room, but we've been covering reliability stories for a long time. And you guys, just trust me, before you got my truck, go to pickuptrucktalk.com, type in your truck, and you'll find some stories. So what we did was we took the most reliable full-size truck story back in 2023. That's Consumer Reports to the story, and you can find it, again, right there. Uh, that's the one I wrote up that said Ram shocks again because Ram's reliability is gone uh, skyrocketed, massive improvement. Uh, what's curious about that story was, spoiler alert, the 2023 Ford and 50 didn't make the top three from that story. Not the top three. Now in a recent article, the folks at Consumer Reports take it one step further, saying this is the one high-selling vehicle you should avoid. Don't buy it. And so now we can't give you the details. We're not going to go through the paywall. We have an agreement with Consumer Reports not to share the details with it. But the quick take in the vehicle is, the truck's ride, handling, and reliability come, come up short. Ride, handling, and reliability, they say, makes it a terrible truck. Do not buy that. So again, we're not going to tell you to be on the paywall. We can't spill the beans. It's how we, it's how we do business because of reports. We will say the Ram 1500 and the Toyota Tundra topped the F50 in a predicted reliability. Now, that's predictive, rely, predictive, predictive, I need a drink, predictive reliability and that's based on past performance, future, that, that kind of stuff. I know there's a lot of controversy about that as well. But that's how we do reliability in new trucks because you have to have some measure, some idea what the reliability is going to be like. You just can't walk in and buy something without having some idea. And I'll be curious to see if the, the Toyota Tundra stays in that top spot because we've seen some issues with that truck as well. But So I know what you guys are thinking immediately you're going to go, Tim, it's that damn EcoBoost engine. Those turbos are a big issue. You cannot have an EcoBoost engine, a full-size truck. Turbos are a big issue. So we've done this a few times. We've covered how reliable the Ford F50 is. We looked at this back in 2020. And what's interesting is look at carcomplaints.com, it's a reports and JD Power. And we kind of put together a whole story on this back then. And there's me and my hoodie in my garage. Uh, so <laughs> looking at this stuff, what's interesting about this, I'm gonna point this out again, I've said this many times, is you look at the F, if you look at carcomplaints.com, you may think the V6 and V8 engines are bad, but in 2012, they said the worst model year because of engine problems. And there's 47 results. I'm gonna, actually, I was go over here. I'm sorry. Wrong story. May 23rd, 2020. We have a story I wrote up. And I'm, I'm sorry to switch things, but I want to make sure I get this accurate. Here we go. I looked at, like like Jill did, I looked at carcomplaints.com, nissa.gov, and consumerreports.org. And if you look at the, the data, you begin with the engine. Now, Consumer Reports does not distinguish between engines when they do the reliability rankings. I've talked to them many times. They won't break down transmissions, engines. We know this Ford 10-speed has had some issues uh, starting with 21, 2021 model year. It's learning transmission. People have had that ref, reflashed the dealership. There's been some issues there. I think there's actually still a class action lawsuit on that transmission as well. But looking at engines, as we've covered in the past, EcoBoost engines make people nervous with turbo replacement running the thousands of dollars. Flat out, no argument there. You replace a turbo, it's thousands of dollars. And you have a twin turbo on the EcoBoost engines. However... In our research, we found that the naturally aspirated 5.0 liter V8 has actually become more unreliable and potentially heading to worse reliability with the addition of cylinder deactivation, which GM fans know too well, that happened in the 2022 model year, now has cylinder deactivation. And we found that the in our data that the 5.0 liter V8 has been more unreliable. Um, so it's interesting. We haven't heard many complaints about 3.5 liter EcoBoost going back I started this business, I started putting on this job 12 years ago. When the EcoBoost first came out, there were some issues with it. And ever since then, we have we haven't heard many complaints. Um, I had the 21 Power Boost. I didn't have any problems with the engine, no problems with transmission. 
but we, I am hearing more and more about issues with a five liter V8, especially with a cylinder deactivation, especially with more ongoing issues. So keep that. I know, I know that goes against the counter. It goes, it, it challenges the norm. It challenges all the people that are really mad about turbocharged engines. I can tell you that everybody's going turbos for better uh, emissions, better power output, better torque, and sometimes better fuel economy and, and depending on how you're testing them. So, but I, yeah, that's what I'm gonna say about that. If you go down even farther, we did find a lot of problems with 10-speed transmission. Look at that. The class action lawsuit. That's what I get from being on a plane all day and forgetting the stuff in my head. But I knew there was a class action lawsuit having the transmission reflashed. I believe that part of the reliability that Consumer Reports is talking about is not engine related. It's transmission related. It's a joint transmission between GM and Ford. They built it with the same mechanical parts. However, the software and the tuning is all specifically Ford or GM. So it's similar parts but how they put those parts together as far as how it performs in the engine is all about that brand. And so I think that's what they're finding. And the thing that happens here is with, when you have problems with an end with a transmission, right? For example, it takes a long period of time for those problems to not become problems anymore. What I mean by that is if you get like hundred people complain about a problem in February, and then you finally get it all fixed in July, it takes a while for that to cycle out of the reliability rankings. And so this isn't to say that that 10 speed is still garbage. It is to say that they've worked on it. They've addressed it. They've reflashed it because it's a learning transmission, which a learning transmission means if you drive gung ho when you get up, when you buy your truck, which most people do, the EcoBoost is really fast. They get like, Simon, look at my buddy. Look at how fast it is. And they slam on the gas all the time. That transmission thinks that's the way you drive all the time. And then if you drive differently, you may have some weird transmission shifting because it expects you to drive fast. It's a weird thing about learning transmissions which is where Ford has been as far as reflashing them. I've heard many stories last year about dealerships being overwhelmed with transmission jobs and really came down to the fact that guys just had to reflash it, which is computer software, get it back to normal. So I don't, I, I, I wouldn't to take, you know, I wouldn't say, yeah, they still have problems with it. I wish it all the time. They still have problems with this, that, and the other. Well, you know, a lot of times they don't. The automakers want to fix these problems. Nobody wants to sell a truck that's unreliable. That's just bad business. Now, what I would tell you about your power boost, if you remember that power boost had 21, that got me kind of fired up was I had the rust issues already in that truck. And it's because uh, another owner pointed out, and then you can go down to my video right here, uh, that they do not coat the rear axle and some of the frame was losing some of its paint on that truck. It's, it's, it was just really frustrating. 3,000 miles crawling into the truck and see that. A lot of argument when those videos came out, a lot of people saying I was a dumbass. Every truck, every truck has rust on it, Tim. Every new truck has rust on it. Well, that's a load of bull. I went to the dealerships and I checked out different trucks. I checked out Ford, Ram, GM, uh, Toyota. I think I, I didn't find a Nissan, and but I, I, Ram and Toyota. Ram, you could probably eat a sandwich off of. Toyota was spotless because of all the rat past frame issues. They coat the hell out of their trucks. It's Ford and GM that do not coat their undercoatings on the rear axle housing. Now, rear axle housing is a lot of heavyweight steel. It's it, it's cast is it cast iron steel? You guys correct me in the comments. Um, that's not going to rust through. Uh, it, it, it take you know 100 200 years. But when you buy a brand new truck for 62,000, I think 63,000 was that Ford Power Boost. You just don't want rust. I, I'm actually currently in Michigan. I know all about rust in Michigan. I lived here for a while. You just don't want it. And I don't want to have to coat my truck. I don't put fluid them on there. I bought a brand new truck. I shouldn't have to put rust on it. So what I would encourage you to do is to take this grain of salt. If you do look at a Ford, I would go look at a Ford M50. I would drive around. I would check transmission shifting. I would crawl underneath of it and inspect the frame and the rear axle housing and make sure the truck operates how you like it. Now on that truck, I had a few small issues had some clicking sounds or popping sounds by the um, front as far as the A-pillar on the plastic covering the A-pillar. But otherwise, the truck was fantastic. And I still miss the power on board feature that that power boost, I think, or the uh, the hybrid I had. It was fantastic. But I saw this really interesting news that last year, Consumer Reports said that GM, the two full-size GM trucks were terrible. They had a whole article about how te terrible they were. Don't buy them. And this year they said, you know what? Ford, do not buy a Ford this year. You will be sorry, according to Consumer Reports. Okay. That's what I got. <laughs> what are your comments going to be? I can't wait to read them. I'm going to head to dinner because I clearly need some food. 
Sorry to mess that up in the video. I just I only have time to do this once. Sorry about that. Make sure you check us out on the web, pickuptrucktalk.com. We do reliability stories all the time. We're kind of known for them. Check them out. I'm always curious about reliability, that kind of stuff. Make sure you follow the other videos over here. And again, the website. As always, thanks for watching. I will see you down the road.